Hey folks, Cornell with YouTube Fishing Vids. It's that time of the month, truly one of my favorite times of the month. And for a lot of you folks that have a mystery tackle box subscription, I know it's one of your favorite times of the month also. When you get these boxes, there's nothing better than breaking them open and seeing what's inside. So here we go. I'm going to show you what's inside mine. I'm going to rig them. I'm going to fish them. I'm going to do my darndest to catch some fish on them because I'm on a beautiful lake in Virginia. It's June, but the mid-Atlantic humidity is at bay. It's actually one of those pristine low humidity days, maybe barely 82 degrees. Water temperature are about 85. I know there'll be some fish out deep. So let's see if any of the baits in this box match what my conditions and what my area has to hold. So here we go. Here's the box. Here's the here's the card. It looks like I've got some crankbaits in here. And actually the first one looks like a crankbait, but it's actually a top water bait. The Sparrow by Strike Pro. It's a wake bait, a really nice natural pattern wake bait. That's really beautiful. That's a great bait by Strike Pro. They make really, really nice looking baits. That's going to be a little later. It's midday. I'm going to actually be fishing one of those afternoon into the evening deals. So when I find some shady spots and the sun starts to dip, it's top water time and the sparrow is going on. So we'll hopefully get that wake bait drawing some fish to the surface. All right, next one coming out. Here comes another. This is another crankbait by Bomber. Look at this beauty. Just a sexy shad, medium deep diving square bill. Check that out. That's a square bill, six to eight, six to ten foot diver actually is what that is. The sun is in and out. That's got a little bit of a luster to it, a little bit of sparkle, and there's some wood, and there's some good cover down somewhat deep. So that square bill bouncing off that cover real deep is going to hopefully get the uh, get the reaction bite I'm hoping to get. So there's the bomber, square bill, medium deep diver. Let's see what's next. Here's a big one. Here's a really nice crankbait. Look at this thing. Wow. So that's a uh, AMP deep diver. So this is uh, by Biovex. That's going to be, I don't know how deep this thing's running, but it looks like it's a pretty deep diver. All right, so we got a bass, bass color idea, a little lustrous baby bass color. So that's going to be my deepest diving bait. I've seen some fish out here probably already 12 to 15 feet deep, so I'm sure that's going to get to them. So it looks like a cranking day if I don't drop it and lose it and throw it in the water before I cast it in the water. So all right, I'm excited to throw some crankbaits today. That's going to be pretty awesome. All right, now we have next a Tioga Lucky John. What's a Lucky John? Lucky John's a soft plastic. All right, here we go. Little. 3.4 inch little paddle tail little looks like a watermelon red flake let's take a look at this little guy i know exactly what i'm gonna do with this oh isn't that cute <laughs> it's a little baby little baby swim bait with a little paddle tail and some little rib, ribs on its tail all right that's going to be an eight ounce ball head jig i know exactly how i'm doing this that's going to be a perfect perfect bait for some suspended fish i don't know i know i'm going to find some suspended fish midday like this so this is going to be an absolutely great option i'm probably going to dip the tail put a little chartreuse on there make it look like a little baby bluegill so that's going to be my finesse option of the day is that Tioga? So that's going to be a great little option. And there's another finesse option in here, it looks like. Looks like Charlie's Worms hooked us up again. And Charlie's Worms got us a little, looks like a six inch shaky head worm. Just a real basic straight up straight tail. There you go. Black. Black's an awesome color, especially when I start finding some of these shady spots, these dark spots with this little bit of stain in the water. There's nothing better. It looks like a little baby black snake or a little little baby leech or something of that sort. So hopefully we'll get something grabbing onto a black shaky head worm. And a piece of terminal tackle coming out of the mystery tackle box for the month of June. Thank you, Mustad. There we go. We've got three four aught belly weighted swim bait hooks, eighth ounce. So I got some Kytex, a four aught is going to be perfect for the, about the 4.8 size Kytex swim bait. So that's what I'm going to do. It's really calm today. I have a little bit of ripple on the water, not much wind. So I don't think a spinner bait or the uh, vibrating jig is going to be a good option, but a swim bait in lieu of those will be a great option. So now thanks to Mustad and Mystery Tackle Box month of June, I'm going to be able to rig one up. And how about this? What is going on? It looks like we've got a uh, sample of cologne out here, but I promise you, I'm not putting this on. This isn't cologne. This is garlic. This is for the this is for the fish. So I'm gonna probably put that little garlic scent, get a little extra hang on tight type of deal going on with some of these Charlie's worms and maybe even a drop or two on the uh, on that little swim bait. So folks, it's time to get at it. It's a really great box. I love crankbait fishing and it's a perfect time of year to do it. So you just stay tuned. Let's rig them up and let's get fishing. All right, folks, so I made it out on the main lake. I've got a great little point here that's holding some fish, I hope. And uh, from what I can see, there's some fish here. Let's just see if they're biting. There it is. There's the bomber, the six to 10 foot square bill, a square bill medium deep diver. That's gonna be a great option. I got an avid rod. That's my St. Croix avid rod. It's a medium medium heavy, moderate action crankbait rod, and I've got a medium speed, old school smoke reel, and I got a copolymer today. I actually put a copolymer on, which is 10 pound test. It's gonna give me the option to fish these two crankbaits, and I got the option to throw that great weight bait a little bit later. It's uh, it's basically a neutral neutral line. It's not gonna sink, and it's not gonna float too terribly. So unlike fluorocarbon, which sinks, I've got a moderately floating line, which is gonna be great for later when I throw that weight bait. So let's see if we can get cranking and pick off a fish or two. You 
it comes to fishing these points with crankbaits, I wish these GoPros had a polarized lens on them because with these polarized glasses, I don't even need a depth finder to see the depth changes. I mean, it's slightly stained, but I could absolutely see how much more shallow it is running off this point, coming out way out here, about 50 to 80 yards out into the depth of the uh, main lake here. So even if you don't have a depth finder, folks, and you're out fishing, if you get yourself a good pair of polarized glasses, you cast right over these points into the darker looking water, which is your deeper water. As it comes up, it gets a little more orangey. There's your shallow depths and basically six to 10 foot diver. I'm casting all the way across the point into about 15, bringing it way up in about four and it's dropping right back down. And as it starts to get into that area where it's real shallow, that square bill's just digging in, bouncing off little rocks and hopefully a stump or two, it's going to deflect and hopefully get a reaction bite. So that's what I'm doing with these points here. Just casting over the point, bringing it into what I could obviously see is the shallow, shallow area of the point and banging it across and hopefully I'll get picked up. Okay, folks, so I've been hitting the points and I haven't gotten any action. So I saw a few little little fish coming up and busting on the surface outside and around the points. So it looks like there's some activity out there, but they're not biting in the depth of this crankbait's running. So if you look in front of me, I've got some shady spots. It's, like I said, it's about midday. It's probably about one, two o'clock in the afternoon. The sun is really, really high in the sky and it's barely, barely casting a little bit of a shadow right here on this edge of the shoreline. So basically I'm going to target that shade. I'm going to target the shade midday here on a, you know, 82, 83 degree day with that bright sun. And hopefully in the shady spots, we'll pick up a bass, but that's at least something else to try if you're having a struggle and you're trying to do a little power fish in midday, get on these shady banks and just throw your bait and cover all that shade as much as you can. I think I may have gotten my first bass, folks. I was working these shady pockets. Oh, when it gets off, eat it. No, he's still on there. Oh, he's barely hooked. Oh, he gets off. There's the first, that's what it was. He was barely hooked and he started swimming at me. So there's my first first bass fishing these shady spots. I just got to the point and right on the edge of where this uh, point met a little bit shade, I, cr I got my first bass on the crankbait. So let's see if we can get another one. Let's fish for a couple more minutes before we change up and uh, we won't count that one. We'll try and get one in the boat before we count it. So there we are guys. We're literally working the shoreline in this shady pocket and here's the point right here. And right as I cast it over the point, it hit that shade and that fish was sitting right there on the edge. So let's see if I can pop one in that same spot. Oh, <laughs> that's number two fish that gets off. They are really short striking it, folks. Uh, so there's two fish on this bomber, square bill, medium, deep diver. Uh, it's slick calm. It is, it is like a soft plasticky kind of moment right now. I mean, this time of the day to even get two fish on a crankbait is actually pretty awesome. I'm going to keep throwing a couple more casts. I'm going to go a little bit deeper, see if some of the bigger fish that want to hold on and maybe eat a little bit better are going to eat that deep diving crankbait. And then I'm going to go to some soft plastics until later in the afternoon. Then I'm going to start throwing some moving baits a little bit more. So let's throw a couple more casts in this spot since I grabbed one and keep rolling. All right, folks, that's enough cranking for for a hour or so. I was cranking for an hour, got two bites, and uh, in lieu of spending that much more time with these conditions, look how calm it is, folks. I still got a great point. I still got a barely ripple on the water behind me here with the uh, with the main lake, but it's time to shaky head. It's time to break out that little swim bait and go a little finessey for now until the sun starts to dip a little bit more on a midday, midday deal like this with this calmness on a high pressure day. Let's go finesse a little bit, see if we can pick up a couple of bass. So let me rig up and get myself a shaky head going on. Okay, I'm all rigged up, folks. There it is, a Charlie's worm, just about a six inch black shaky head worm on a Mustad 3 16 ounce stand up shaky head jig. So let's get this out here and just drag some of these points and get up in a little bit of a uh, little bit of hard cover and see if we can find some of these finicky bass that are struggling on a high pressure day. Oh my God, that's the first cast. Oh my God. That is exactly why I did that, guys. That is the first cast with it. Let me put it up in fast motion so you not wait so long, but there we go. That's why we have to do finesse sometimes. I've been cranking for an hour. I got two bites and that's about the same size as the fish that I was uh, that I was working about. Right here on the same point where I've been cranking and there it is, Charlie's Worm, black, uh, moderately stained. So it's a great color, folks. It's got great contrast and that's just a perfect, perfect setup right there for a stand-up jig. So yeah, I might throw a couple more casts if I'm gonna get one on the very first cast with a shaky head. So let's throw it a couple more times, get a couple more fish and then keep on rolling through the uh, items in the June Mystery Tackle Box Pro Box. Oh, there we go, number two. 
right off the same point two casts later folks how awesome is that and i've literally been fishing this for like four minutes so i don't know if that's enough for you all to convince you that a mystery tackle box is such a great option i mean here i'm cranking for now i get two bites but you know you just play the conditions i reach into the, ta the mystery tackle box break out a shaky head that it comes in and hook it up and there's two bass so guys i'm telling you mystery tackle box is just such a fun thing you get it every month it just shows up on your doorstep your mailbox wherever it may be you open it up you never know what you're going to get but it's usually going to be hooked up with some great great options for whatever kind of fishing you need to do with so there's another shaky head bass i'm going to break out that uh i'm going to break out that itty bitty little swim bait i got a little point here with some fish on it let me break that out and rig that up in my little eight ounce ball head jig now i've caught a couple bass on the charlie's worm and uh let's just keep on going with what's in that box i know they're obviously a little finicky today so let's get the next little finicky bait out and see what happens check out that little beauty <laughs> that awesome just a uh, watermelon green pumpkinish red flake looking little dip tail so i made it look like a little bluegill so there it is eighth ounce ball head jig open hook concept there's my next finesse option out of the uh, mystery tackle box i'm on the same point let's go ahead and uh throw this out there on a little it's my drop shot special guys it's nothing more than a little eighth ounce ball head jig and a tiny little swim bait so six foot eight medium light extra fast taper it's 10 pound test braid and a eight pound test fluorocarbon leader. So I'm just gonna cast it out here and slowly crawl it across the point. Obviously those two bass that I caught on the shaky head were on the bottom. Let's see if I can get this close enough to the bottom to creep it for them to wanna to come up and, and pop it. There we go. <laughs> I felt that fish hit it once and it came back and got it. There's my first fish on that itty bitty little swim bait out of the mystery tackle box. That was literally just uh, one bend around this point. And another nice little fish. Nothing crazy, but I'll take these all day long. That is so cool. All right, so there we go. That's uh, kind of three out of three. I got two bites on the crankbait, didn't get them in. Two on the shaky head, and now one on this awesome little itty bitty swim bait. All right, let's throw that out to that point a couple more times, see if there's any more willing to bite. And then we'll keep on moving through some of these baits. All right, so I caught a fish on this. I wanna keep on moving through this afternoon and try and get something on every one of the uh, baits and or terminal tackle pieces in this mystery tackle box. So I'm gonna put this little swim bait up and I'm gonna bump up the size of my swim bait. I'm gonna get that uh, four aught extra wide gap belly weighted uh, mustad hook out of the mystery tackle box and hook it up with one of my bigger swim baits. And that way it'll be weedless and I'll be able to maybe throw it up in some of these pads and up a little shallow, kind of like I'd be throwing a spinner bait. So hang tight, let's rig up. All right, there we go. There's the perfect combo, a Kitek Bluegill Flash 4.8 and a four aught weighted swim bait hook by Mustad. So eight ounce belly weight. So that's gonna be that's gonna be just about right. You know, I'll be able to throw up into some of these pads and along the points, it'll probably be heavy enough that I can let it sink, crawl it across the bottom if that's where the bass are. And it's really, really subtle. So as finicky as they've been today, this could be a really great option. It's a little bigger profile, so hopefully that's what's going to get the big one so here's how we rig this up this doesn't have the screw lock idea this is just a basic extra wide gap with a uh, weight molded to the to the shank of the hook so we're going to make this real simple and what's really great about this concept in lieu of the one that will actually have that screw lock when you have the screw lock idea you actually have the eye of the hook sticking out of the bait so sometimes when the eye is going to be sticking out of the uh, out of the bait like that you're basically catching on to weeds and grass and things like that a little bit more but the way i'm going to rig this you'll see that eye of the hook is going to be buried completely completely inside the soft plastic so the way we're going to do that this is going to be the bottom of the bait like so it's as simple as this you're just going to pierce the bait like so right to the middle you're going to bring it right out to the end and there you go, you have just a little bit of the eye sticking up barely, and so that's gonna be really, really, really weedless. So there you go, that's what it's gonna be like, just a tiny little bit exposed so you can get the hook in there, and then we're gonna go ahead and find the line up where it's gonna lie perfectly straight, and it's gonna go right in that little rib right there, and very important, folks, to come out super straight, absolutely dead center out of the back of the swim bait, and there she is. Perfectly straight, perfectly weedless, and there's the belly weighted swim bait. All right, cool. So we're going to tie that on. It's going to be mega weedless. I'm going to drag this around the bottom of the points, drag it along the edges of these lily pads and see if we can find one. All right, got her all tied on. She's good to go. 15 pound test fluorocarbon, St. Croix Avid Rod. This is actually a seven foot medium power fast action and just a, uh, just a speed spool tournament pro. So 15 pound test fluorocarbon should do it. Let's get this out there off of some of these points, just like we were doing and see if we can find a little bit bigger bass. 
<laughs> oh my god that's like the second cast guys second cast i let this thing sink really slow to the bottom oh it's a little guy it's about the same size on the kai tech oh my god this is this is absolutely awesome this is a great little point there's obviously a few fish here nothing big but check that out there it is guys the kai tech 4.8 on that mustad 4 aught extra wide gap belly weighted swim bait hook all right cool so we are we are on board we are now what two baits and a terminal tackle and a couple on the crankbait so we got one big crankbait left we've got uh that wake bait for a little top water action a little bit later tonight so let's just keep fishing let's just see if we can find at least a big fish but in the meantime we're actually getting some numbers and we're getting through some of the tackle in the mystery tackle box for the month of june Oh my gosh, right by the wall over there. What is it we got here? Oh, decent little fish. Nothing big at all, but man, that's only like two casts later, folks. I'm just kind of fan casting the area. I'm telling you, man, these swim baits on a clean, well, on a clear, calm day like this, that real subtle action on those baits are incredible. So yeah, just threw it right up on that, right up on that wall, that little Wow, that little erosion protection wall, whatever they call those things. And they, they absolutely nailed this. That was great. So there's two fish on this bait. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do next. I could just keep on rolling to see if I can find a couple fish because that was actually a pretty, pretty awesome run of, of fish on some subtle bait. So let's just keep going. Let me see what I can come up with. I'm going to re rig this back up and go ahead and see if I can get maybe a couple more fish, play with that shaky head and try and find that big one. Oh, another one right on the bank. Oh boy. Okay. So <laughs> I lost him. He came off, but I guess there's some fish right up on the bank feeding. They're little ones, but they're eating the swim bait. That is really cool. So that may be why uh, some of those fish weren't eating that deeper diver. There's actually a few fish up shallow. So I'm going to get that shaky head out. I'm going to see if I can just beat the bank with a shaky head a couple times and, and pop a couple more and see if we can get them to stick. Let me show you how simple the rigging of that, uh, that Charlie's worm, shaky head worm was. There's the, uh, the mustad stand up shaky head jig 3 16th ounce that I was using there's a little screw lock and the Charlie's worm is a nice little flat spot there and the uh, mustad screw lock has really got a sharp little deal so you just get that started as centered as you can right in the tip of that worm give it a little pressure to get that pierced and you start screwing it on it's that easy folks I'm right-handed so let me turn around here there we go so get that screwed on like so these Charlie's worms are really dense and they actually float. These are really good floating baits. So on a shaky head, they and a stand-up shaky head, they really, really do the job when it comes to giving a lot of action. They're really, really soft. So there we go. That's all set up. That's not going anywhere. Center it nice and there's a flat side right there. So I have it on the flat side. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna just Texas rig that real simple. And we're gonna keep that buried in there. So line it up, come straight in. And there we go there's our shaky head so that's gonna pierce perfectly once he bites i sometimes got a little starter hole there going and that's it there's our shaky head all right charlie's worm let's see what you can do let's see if we can get a couple more up a little more shallow and if not we'll drop off the points and see if that's where the bigger ones are there we go oh gosh <laughs> they're tough to stick today that's another thing i'm telling you sometimes these fish get finicky and uh when they're finicky they're not biting and holding on all that well so again the charlie's worm that was only second cast with it so let's keep going with it and see if we can pick another one up all right right off a of point i don't know if he's bigger yet he's about the same he's about oh maybe a little bit bigger all right there we go charlie's worm shaky head right off the point ah he's a little bit bigger i think just a touch just a touch bigger so there we go all right we got a little little few baits happening out of the mystery tackle box the numbers are there let's just keep fishing let's just see how many we can catch and it's just a it's just a numbers game until the big one bites all right, I've got enough action off uh, off some of these little finesse baits. It's time with these clouds coming in and it getting just a little bit later, it's time to get that last deep diving crankbait out and uh, get that tied on the same exact rod reel combo that I was throwing that bomber square bill medium deep diver on and see if there's something giant out deep. There's got to be a big fish hanging off of one of these points, just waiting for a for a bigger meal to swim on by. So let me break that out, get that tied on, and see if we get lucky. That is that is an absolutely that's a gorgeous bait. All right, the color's perfect. It's just a mild stain. It's kind of a golden, 
a golden bronzy color, baby bass looking greenish bronze. Good rattle, we're good. All right, let's tie it on. So just as I'm about to break out this big deep dive and plug right here in front of me, I got fish breaking. So the sun's dipping and there's some schooling fish literally like 10 feet from my boat right here. Let me see if I can pull this baby swim bait through him real quick. It's a shallow point. There he is right there. Oh, wow. What is that? Dude, I had breaking fish right here and I just threw this baby bait and I just had a two pounder jump off. Oh my gosh. Let me see if they're in here. Oh, they're all over me. The stealth of the bait. Oh my God, they're right behind me. Dude, this is crazy. I know the deep diving crankbait wouldn't be the thing to do right now. They're just coming up to the surface and busting. So let me just see if I can run this through here. Who knows what they're eating, but I just had a two pounder eat the swim bait on the first cast. How cool is that? Just about to throw a deep dive. I <laughs> get surface activity. That's hilarious. Let's see if I bust another one. Well, this is a perfect kind of bait to have tied on when you have that kind of thing going. When you start seeing schooling fish and you've got 10 pound test and you can launch an itty bitty little bait like this to match the hatch and hopefully be similar to what these fish are schooling on. And a lot of times, you know, when these little bass like this you know maybe up to two pounds maybe bigger you never know what you're gonna get out of a school the bait fish that are usually busting they're usually busting on are pretty small so this tiny little this tiny little bait out of the mystery tackle box is absolutely perfect for that just another another example of how many cool things come out of the box that you can just tie on and have ready to roll when anything and everything happens out on the water all right let's just keep that there i'm going to keep that there sitting there and here it is i got the big old plug all right, it's been a long time since I've thrown a big old plug, so I think it's about time I give it some love. So let's go ahead and throw this around off the point. I'm gonna get out a little farther and deeper, keeping an eye out for some surface activity, and hopefully uh, cranking it past a giant. If it got hooked, that is absolutely hilarious. I just had a top water blow up on my deep diving crankbait. The second it hit the surface, something came up and tried to eat it. That's so funny. I don't think he's hooked, but with these big plugs, you never know if it's a little fish, he can come in feeling like nothing, but no, he didn't get it. But gosh, it'll blow up on top. That's so funny on my who knows how many feet deep diver. Oh, they're busting everywhere though. Am I allowed to do it? Oh, I want to pick up my swim bait really quick and throw out there. I'll get this bait in real fast and I'll throw it back out there. If I see any more busting fish like that, I'm gonna be throwing that, spinner, that little swim bait for a couple seconds. You know what, guys? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm actually crazy not to consider this option. I'm cutting this deep diver off. I've thrown it a handful of times. You know, if I kept throwing this deep diving crankbait, you know I'm gonna catch something eventually. It could be a giant, but we're trying to catch some fish and I only have so much time. I'm cutting it off. I've only thrown it like three times. I've had a fish blow up on it on the top. Just before I threw it, I hooked a two pounder on the itty bitty little swim bait. It's strike po wake bait time. Tell me I won't catch one on top right now if they're busting like that and they're trying to eat my deep diver off the top. I'm going to slowly wake this across the top over this point on all these schooling fish. I can't imagine that bait right there not getting some attention. So let's see if we can get a top water bite right now mid to late afternoon. All right, folks, I got it tied on. Take a, take a look at this thing. So it's translucent, kind of a green black back. What I didn't even notice until I opened the package, check out the belly. So it's translucent through the belly. So when a bass is looking up at it, they're getting that orangey red color from looking up uh, through the bottom of the bait. That is really cool. And again, they're still popping around me. So let's get this wake bait going. And let's see if we can get a top water bite while these fish are obviously active. This is a really cool opportunity. Let's see what's going on. Oh, it casts like a bullet too. Good. All right, here we go. That bait has absolutely awesome action. I know where I'm going. I'm going over here on the other side of this uh, point, on the other side of the lake. There's some, uh, there's some standing timber, there's some fallen trees, and there's some more shade. Even though I've got shade with these clouds, I'm going to try and find an area that's had more shade that might hold more fish, maybe a bigger fish. And this wake bait is, is awesome. It's moving really good. I can't wait to see a blow up happen on this thing. Hopefully it will. Oh, I hope you all saw that. that. That was like the shortest cast I've taken all day, right on this wall. And there's the topwater fish on the wake bait. Itty bitty little fish came up. 
hooked them. I, I'm just, I'm telling you guys, these fish are really, really lethargic today. They're not eating the bait. So uh, tells a tale about these moving baits. Top water, the crankbait I lost a couple on. So that, again, is another fish on a bait out of the mystery tackle box for the month of June. I'm just down essentially to the deep diver. I want to get one in the boat with this top water, so I'm going to keep throwing it. There's nothing better than taking advantage of cloud cover and a dipping sun when it comes to top water. So I'm going to probably throw this maybe for the rest of the night. So I would see if we can get that one big one. And if it's on top, it just makes it that much better. So let's keep fishing. There we go. <laughs> Guys, I got the topwater fish. It just took one cast in this new spot and he came up and whacked it. It's the biggest fish of the day on top water. That is awesome. That is so great. Oh, he got us off. What can you do? That's a big fish. That was about a two and a half to three. So let's just keep throwing it and see if we can actually get one in the boat. It's been the story of my life today. These fish are getting off way too easy, but that didn't take long. So let's just see if we can get another one and actually show it to you guys. There's another blow up. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna get them. I'm gonna get them. That's three blow ups in a row on that same cast where I just got this guy. I had one hit it. It could have been the same fish to be honest with you. I gotta be real careful with this guy. Hold on, I'm gonna get this guy on the ground because he has got trebles and I have got fingers and they don't go well together. There it is. Top water bait. He's got a little blood on him, so I'm gonna let him go quick. Off he goes. <laughs> He's okay. Folks, that was awesome. That's like two casts in a row on the top water. I found just the right spot. So mystery tackle box, pro box, month of June. Did it up. I'm not done. I'm still fishing. I'm going to continue fishing that top water bait because that's two bigger fish and the biggest fish on top. So I've got a little spot here I'm going to fish. So let's keep going. Oh my God, right by the boot dock on the shortest cast ever. This is the trick right up shallow, right next to these wake baits are so subtle and so sweet, man. This little strike pro is killing it. Oh, they're so dangerous with all those trebles, man. This is awesome. So most of the action now is on the top water. Just like I said earlier, when I started busting open this box, I was waiting for that sun to go down. Evening top water is absolutely phenomenal. This is gonna be hard to do. All right, guys, so just settle down, open your lip, and I'm going to get you out, I promise. Got you. <laughs> Boy, these are some aggressive fish. Got him in the side, got him in the mouth, kicked it out of his mouth, and then got him in the side. Nothing big, but top water, folks. Can't beat it. The wake bait is absolutely annihilating. Okay, I know what to do now. I'm going to be doing short, itty bitty little casts right up into these little bits of cover, into these little boat docks, and the corners of these fallen timber. It's awesome. I'm so psyched. So let's see if we can get some more top water action. So, what I'm doing with this wake bait. I'm doing what you would do with any top water bait, what you should do with any top water bait. I'm doing my best to do a soft entry into the water, but it's, it's kind of hard when you got this big old chunky plug of a wake bait, but let the ripples dissipate. The second it hits the water, those ripples are rippling out, rippling out, and just let them dissipate. Everything's calm now. So any bass that were in the area that you may have spooked out are kind of chilling now, and now I'm going to do my little crank. I'm just going to slowly start cranking, and that thing is just waking just barely under the surface. It's got a rattle, so it's making just a little bit of noise. It's really, really natural looking. It's got that bright pinkish, orangey belly that they're looking up at. So great target to look at. And boy, they've been whacking it. And I've only been throwing this thing for a short time now. And in this one spot alone, I don't know. It's, I've, I've lost track how many blow ups and how many fish, three fish, something like that. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm having, having a blast with my mystery tackle box, June mystery tackle box, pro box, killing it. All right, folks, I'm positioning myself on a deep side of a point because I'm convinced I want to at least hook a fish on every single bait out of this mystery tackle box. I'm so close I can taste it. I'd love to be throwing top water for the rest of the night because it is just that fun. But I want to catch a fish on every bait out of this box more. So let's just see if I can crank one up on the deep diver out of the mystery tackle box for the month of June. And if I catch one quick, maybe I'll get right back to that top water. But in the meantime, let's crank one up and see if we get lucky and close this thing out. Well, if I could show you folks anything about a deep diving crankbait, I could show you how I get them hung up. That's not an uncommon thing to have happen. I'm going to go over top of where I came from and see if I can pop it out. And I got it off. Okay, good. So at least I caught something on the deep diver. Wasn't what I wanted to catch, but at least I got it off. So let's keep throwing it. I'm in about the depth I need to throw it in. I'm in about 10 to 15 feet of water. I'm making contact with the bottom and I'm trying to get this thing to dig and I'm trying to get it 
bang against something so I can get a reaction bite of some sort. So I'm cranking. Let's see how it goes. All right, folks, there's a time and a place for a deep diving plug, and it's just not today or tonight. So this is going up. I've got barely maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes left to fish. I got to put that top water back on. That's just too much fun. So we're going to go with that wake bait until the night is done. So hang tight. Let's put it back on and see what we can do. <laughs> no way oh my gosh folks i am losing light so quick but i gotta sign out fish on that all absolutely awesome strike pro wake bait little guy but that's just a great way to end it you could probably barely see me but let's see if i can get this thing unhooked without hooking myself there's just never enough time in the day for fishing folks and time flies when you're having fun and today i was having fun with a mystery tackle box pro box for the month of june folks absolutely awesome awesome gig if you choose to treat yourself use the code ytfv short for why youtube fishing vids and get ten dollars off your first month of your new subscription for new subscribers that would be just be a great thing to see come in the mail every month now wouldn't it absolutely great deal for you folks that have a mystery tackle box subscription you know what's going on if you can see this you know what's going on when you open the box share your experience go ahead and check it out you got a big old ruler in there if you catch a fish that qualifies go ahead and measure it out take a picture of it on the ruler and send it in to instagram hashtag mtb keeper check out mysterytacklebox.com for the rules and regs and see if you can win yourself something so folks as always i appreciate you joining me as always i appreciate you subscribing until we meet again over and out